All right, I am live here today with Brenda Archer, who is, a, she has created her Inside Out company. We're gonna talk about that very awesome, but wild way that you got there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wild way. So yes, you're uh, listening to Talk Soup Du Jour today. And again, just another great interview. Um, the biggest thing that I love to do with these videos is to find out people's story. Yeah. And that's how I end like the videos that I've done, you know, thus far is, What's your story? Mm -hmm. So, Brenda, what's your story? <laughs> I got to just put a little, like, uh, just a really quick intro because we don't have a lot of time here. How I met Brenda. Yes. Very cool. Yes. I had a little shop story. Yeah, called Baby Cat in Gorma Main Street. And you and your honey mm -hmm. had a, um, a business, a restaurant next door in Gorma Main Street. A diner. And, yeah, a diner. I know, it's good. Very good food. Very sad they're not there anymore. <laughs> but uh, you came over one day, and I can't remember the first time that we met, but I just thought you were the coolest chick ever. I thought you were the coolest chick well, ever. Oh my lord! We paid each other to uh, say yes. that just to promote ourselves. And just very kidding. talented and creative, and I bought a lot of jewelry. Oh yeah, you! Uh, oh my gosh, yeah, my sister's very good, good yeah, stuff. Yeah. But you had like the coolest hair. Like your hair <gasps> oh, was like yeah. so like spiked and cool. I yeah. love your hair now too. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah. But uh, but then you had like these cool. I think they were like um. Not uh, like flared jeans. On. Always. I don't know. Yeah, very cool. Always. Very good. Style. Yeah. Like, awesome style. And yes. you were edgy for <gasps> Gorm. Yes. So I've never met anybody else <laughs> who had like style and Gorm before. I'm like, wow. <laughs> like a fellow, you know, like a understander of like fashion. It was wonderful. Edgy so for Gorm. That, I'll take it. Yeah, exactly. I'm a little superficial, I guess. So that's how we met is I'm like, wow, she's kind of cool looking. I, I need to talk to her. I'll take it. But then from there, obviously, um, just met the uh, just an awesome person that you were. But from there, the Lord brought you through some things. And even at that time, yeah. your your mom was going through a lot of health issues. She was. And that was right before she passed. And we were there to pray with you. Mm -hmm. and it was awesome. And get mm -hmm. to know you and your honey yeah. and to eat his food and eat your desserts. Yeah, that was yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah. But then uh, tell us kind of, you know, I guess you can even back up uh, whatever you want to share about what the Lord's done, your journey, and how yeah. you ended up with Inside Out. Yeah, well, Inside Out is uh, a journey of my own cancer story, but I like to say it's not necessarily a cancer story. I like to say it's a pain story because we've all go through pain, and that was yeah. the pain at the time in my life where Inside Out was created from. And it's interesting that you mentioned how you first met me through this whole hair thing, and you were like, she has this cool <laughs> hair, and it's really unique. And through the cancer journey, I learned a lot about that we are so much more than what we see in the mirror. And that's the whole foundation mm -hmm. to Inside Out, which is a uh, tagline is living life beyond the surface. Mm -hmm. um, and I learned that through that whole journey because during uh, my cancer diagnosis of ovarian cancer, I did go through treatment and chemo and I lost all of that trademark hair that I had that you were uh, yeah. noticing when we first met. Um, so that was um, very difficult. Um, to go through and uh, I think when I got still and when I got quiet is when I got clarity about um, who we are mm -hmm. and what's important and as I like to say what matters most yeah. um, so I think once I got still I got clarity I got authentic with myself um, and things started changing mm -hmm. yeah in what in what way like yeah well I think in the way that it changed for me would be that I thoroughly understood that through my career, I put a lot of emphasis on what was happening on the outside. Yeah. Um, I had great knowledge and great skill and in a very dip, deep and rich career. Um, but there was also a lot that um, was important to me about the way I got up and presented myself. Yeah. Um, not that I'm still not, uh, you know, I like to dress nice and look nice, yeah, yeah. but I yeah. absolutely understand that um, life is so much more than what we see in the mirror. Oh um, and when I had a, you know, the Lord brought me to a space one day when I had just gone through two treatments of chemo and I had total loss of hair. Um, and he brought me to a space outside my home. I'll never forget the, the day that it happened mm -hmm. um, where I was walking outside and I had a little night shirt on and a pair of barn boots and bald head and I was going to get wood for the, the wood stove. And I was um, piling the wood in my, in my arm and my crux in my arm and it was echoing in the gorge. But the interesting thing when I walked out there that very, very early morning is that I knew I was not alone out there. And for the first mm -hmm. time, but I didn't feel alone like I'm scared. I was just knew I was not alone. I literally turned and looked one time because I just could feel presence. a presence yeah. with me. And I, but the interesting thing was that for the first time in months, I was not f afraid. Fear was not in control in my life at that very moment. So I just kept stacking the wood and stacking the wood. 
and I turned to go into my home and on my home I have a glass door and I had a big pile of wood in my arm and I went to reach for that glass door and there she was, the reflection. And, you know, in the little nightshirt, in the barn boots, with a bald How head, cute. with a big <laughs> muscle full of, of wood. And that was my revelation. Now, you know, the Lord had come to me during my treatment and during my diagnosis. And certainly before that, even when pain had knocked on my door many times before that. Um, but this was different. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he just wrapped me in that love that day, that energy I felt, that presence I felt. I have no doubt that that's who it was. And I was supposed to be in that moment, at that place, at that, at that immediate time. And when I looked and I saw her, I could see that she was still in there. She was still in her eyes, were still there, yeah. not with that trademark blonde hair, yeah. but she was still there, still strong, had a big pile of wood in her Great. hands. And when I reached that door and I saw that reflection, because um, I didn't like to look at myself for a long time in the mirror without my, without, you know, a wig on or a cap or a hat or because something. Because what is society about? We talked about this before exactly. we even started this interview. It's yes. all about how we look and what we've achieved. Achieved. What yeah, does success look outside. like to society? What is success? But what is true success? You had, uh, maybe this sounds cheesy, but you, the Lord gave you an awakening. Yes. Of awakening. like who he created you to be. It didn't, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't like this corporate out there you know mm -hmm. although he gave you incredible talents you still possess them we're going to talk Thank about you. that at the very end Thank you. um how the lord is moving you on to something different now but he created you from the inside out you're he's on the inside mm -hmm. that beauty of like um who you are is wrapped up in him mm -hmm. now and your eyes were open mm -hmm. to you know this stuff goes away it you know, does, it whether away. it through whether it through something like myself yeah. or through pain or just natural aging, we change on the outside. Yeah. So, um, you know, that was something very, it was a revelation for me that day. And yeah. through that day, inside out, living life beyond the surface was born that quickly. I laid in bed during treatments and uh, rehabilitating from chemo and stuff, creating this little business to know that I needed to share this story mm -hmm. and this insight and this revelation that I had with other people um, about pain. Again, it's not a cancer story. It was just the pain I was going through at that moment. Um, but I knew at that second that I needed to share this and to get this out about, you know, we walk by people, we drive by people all day, every day. We look at people and make decisions like that oh about who they are, what their value is, what their worth is, just based on the outside or yeah. by the way they drive. I mean, I've been, I've been, you know, Hopefully driving behind people. <laughs> And saying, you know, don't judge me by the way I drive. Oh <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so yeah, even by the way that we drive, yeah. um, but we certainly walk by people in Wegmans and, and you yeah. know, throughout our entire days. And and you know, call a spade a spade. We do it at home as well. You know, we okay. and so we make we make these judgments of uh, from a social perspective that I would just like to kind of try to bite away at and and just realize that. Yeah. We are so much more. And I, I would love people to come to that understanding in a different way than I did. Um, yeah, I, I think yeah. We, we all do. I, I know when my dad passed away, that was like really sudden. He had a massive heart attack. And he was my guy. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was everything. I, I didn't realize how much I'd put like my, my worth or, or like my being into him being here on this earth with me instead of like depending on my heavenly father. I was heavily depending yeah. on my earthly father, yes. what he thought about me, you know, and we were just, we were like two peas in a pod, just ask mom. But um, <laughs> when he was taken away, it's like my world was disrupted because my faith or what I thought that I needed was wrapped up in an earthly dad. Mm -hmm. And the Lord showed me, I'm your dad, mm -hmm. your eternal dad. Mm -hmm. Not like we don't need our dads, you right, know, right. but he was what I really needed to focus on. And so when my earthly dad was removed, he, he was all I had, but then he was so merciful to bring in, you know, my, my husband now, mm -hmm. uh, Chris, and uh, fill that spot. But um, so now he's doing that in your life. Mm -hmm. He's filling that, that spot. He's showing you the strength that he's mm -hmm. put in you, mm -hmm. that it's not the outer it's like not. you thought that it was. Yeah. So how does that make you feel? Does that, like for me, it was hard because I was so used to doing a rat race. Yes. And, and running, running, running yes. and trying to prove myself. Mm -hmm. but then all of a sudden, you know, your feet are taken out, mm -hmm. you know, from underneath you. And he shows you who you really are. Do you feel more at peace now than you um, had? Yeah, I would say that I'm 80-20 at peace. I'm not going to lie and say I'm 100% yeah, no, no, no at anything. Is, but so I think um, it's I, having to be 100%. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, but I am definitely 80-20 on that. It has definitely changed my life. And again, I said earlier, I gained clarity, more authenticity. And I think I look at authenticity. the authenticity, more of an authentic self. Yes. 
um, yeah. and let go of some of the craziness. Mm -hmm. um, but he has definitely brought me to a lot of awareness. I look at things differently. Um, if you want to see the color blue in a different, a different light, you know, just hear the word uh, cancer diagnosis and you start yeah. seeing things differently, visually things, I'm absolutely appreciating things differently. Mm -hmm. Um, but the connection that I have now with the Lord is the biggest part of, I think, that has come out of this. My faith has grown by leaps and bounds. Um, I, I, I am just so grateful for that. Yeah. Um, and I'm grateful that I couldn't imagine going through it without him. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how people do it. I really don't. That if, if we did not have the Lord when, when Pop passed, I don't know mm -hmm. what I would have done. Mm -hmm. I was weeping hysterically mm -hmm. with him, mm -hmm. you know. But he took that pain, and just like in your life, you know, he opened our eyes. You know, mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm your all in all. I'm yeah. your foundation. Yeah. And I'm going to lead you on. So now, it's all tell us be okay. Like, yeah, exactly. So now, you know, he brought you to a different place. Um, he, he's got you through the treatment, and yeah. you are in recovery. Or mm -hmm. I don't, how do you... Uh, how, I am in remission. Yeah. Um, I do a every three months surveillance where they check my and blood work and I just go day to day and right right now I am great. Yeah, isn't that uh, wild to um, where now, you, before maybe you would have like planned like far, far ahead. Now you're like, Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. I am thankful for the day and you are absolutely right. You know oh, me yeah. well, I yeah, am a yeah. planner. Yeah, I'm she's a planner. a planner, unlike me by, by the seat of my pants, you know. But uh, so tell us where you are now, yeah. which is a very different place than, yeah. um, you know, even where you were. Well, I, uh, when I was going through treatment, which was, I was diagnosed in 2017, started treatment at the end of 2017, fin finished treatment in 2018. Um, and during all of that, of course, I had a 30 year career in healthcare. Yeah. Um, and about eight months ago, my position was eliminated. So I have another Hello. little knock on the door for the, the here's, here's something else, some more pain to go through. But yeah. um, I always like to say, you know, who knew? Who knew what would come from this? And who knew, uh, you know, about the cancer diagnosis? And who knows about what's going to happen after a 30 year career, how you pick yourself up? Well, he knows. And yeah. I'm just going to continue to walk through the doors that he opens for me, and I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. I do speaking engagements. Um, for nonprofits, for for no money, I, I contribute that to nonprofits. But I come in and I do speaking engagements on Inside Out, mm -hmm. um, which I love to do. So if there's any need, any groups or any yeah, places definitely. that would enjoy this um, this story about what matters most, um, I would welcome that opportunity to come on in and share this story. So that's so one the thing folks I do. that are listening are yeah. very, which you need to check this out. You need to check Inside Out out. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how would they do that? Give them the information on how they can do that. www.seemorelookless.com. I love Just it. Just like it sounds. I see more, it. look less, all one word, all lowercase. So we all need to do is to see more. And look less. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. Even the people that you meet now, do you look at them like differently instead of like maybe that quick judgment? Yeah, I don't. You know, and, yeah. I, and I think, you know, mom and dad raised me to know that a little. You know, I yeah, had yeah, a very good foundation so. of yeah. that. You know, I didn't really, I wasn't really judging on people. I appreciated things. I, I love nature. I love animals, all that stuff. So mm -hmm. I had a great foundation that mom and dad gave me. So I, I don't know that I was really really ever in the category to, of course, I, I made instant decisions about, you know, energy that was brought in a room or something, um, and certainly have made judgments about people the way they looked on the outside, but I don't think that I did it abusively for, you know, I, I think I had a good foundation there, but certainly understand it now. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can reach me at www.seemorelookless mm -hmm. or barcher, A-R-C-H-E-R, 009 at Gmail. Okay. And so I am a great. instant responder. So if you reach out to me, you will hear from me. Unlike me, yeah, she'll actually, yeah. I get a little <laughs> lost in things. But no, that is awesome. Brenda, thank you so much. What is one last thing that you would like to leave with of the listener? Um, I would also just like to engage a listener to understand that Inside Out has just been expanded to include my business consulting business right. as well as my speaking engagement business. Mm -hmm. So uh, for 30 years, I have been a workflow process strategist, which I go out and work with um, organizations, businesses to become more efficient, um, to become more, if they have growth plans, how to be able to take that growth and grow with it. So mm -hmm. I, I work with um, businesses and have a consulting opportunity to do that um, and speaking engagements and teams building and uh, it's just a whole plethora of content she that I have that I'm ready to share but oh inside out God. now house is my business consulting as oh, well. it does. that's yes. awesome and let me just tell you she has done it for free for a while for me <laughs> <laughs> I, I how many times have I come to you and said Brenda I don't know what to oh. do you gotta help me and she's always given 
amazing wisdom and insight but not only that like you have the knowledge and understanding of the work world thank you where those of us that are a little bit scattered very artsy but a little bit scattered yeah. you help us get things in order and I'm not even joking <laughs> thank this you. has helped me tremendously I have a lot of experience in it but uh, thank and you're you very that. good at thank it you. yeah Lord's giving some great gifts so you. if you would like to contact her please do that um, watch this video again share it yeah. share it with folks that you know that need this or need this inspirational story and how mm, the yeah. Lord has done amazing healing and growing you're not alone you know mm. when we like you said I love how you said this was that's your story it's not everyone's story you don't have to be a cancer survivor no. to appreciate your story I appreciate your story you know I got to see you go through this I got to be there yeah. with you in yeah. prayer and to you know to to be by your side for for some of this yeah, she did and you, you, you and your side. family yeah. and I like to think about it as you know pain I like to call pain the great traveling professor it knocks on all of our doors and those point. of us that open it up and let it in and deal with it probably are going to get through it a little quicker than and I've closed the door in its face many many times mm -hmm. um, it Tonight. always comes back and knocks again mm -hmm. um, but I like to think of pain as that you know we can't avoid it it's unrealistic in this life it's part of this life mm -hmm. the challenge is and the, the goal I should say rather Rather is to not stay in the pain and yeah. that's what I'm looking forward to helping people to think that. about so your eyes went out they didn't stay in I think yeah. that's a very that's huge that's pivotal mm -hmm. that your eyes don't stay in looking at your own mm -hmm. quote-unquote navel you yeah. know you need to yeah. look out and say you know I feel wretched mm -hmm. but I know like I can I can help somebody and that's what you've been doing you know the Lord hope so giving you a gift no you have no <laughs> you have it's pretty amazing I your hope so. story very amazing so you definitely Thank want you. to check inside out out. I don't know how to say that. I you know. Need to check that out. <laughs> check out Inside Out. Check it out. And again, just give that brief information on how you can get there. www.seemorelookless.com or bearcher, A R C H E R, 009 at gmail.com. I will reply to you immediately. Wonderful. Brenda, thank you so much thank for being here Thank you for the opportunity. Great. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. you have been listening to Talk Soup Du Jour today, and I just want to know uh, what's your story? You can always share that with me too.